So our fuel system, it just dumps out of the tank there. Yeah, it's dinged up from my plenum. Anyway, and feeds your fuel pump. The fuel pump I use, at least for this budget build, and this was very cheap, this, this build. That's, anyway, I think these are 20 bucks, if that. I'll put the link in the description for you. Uh, it's a knockoff Walbro 155. And then it's tied to a voltage regulator. And that voltage regulator is also a... Well, it, it will only allow this to draw three amps. And it's adjusted by this little... It's going to be hard to see. There's a little brass screw on the back of it. And you can adjust the voltage there. But regardless, you're, you're only going to pull three amps off this. So that's not going to drain your battery either. So you could run that oil pump and this fuel pump if you wanted. And be fine. And something else. But I think I'm only running like six volts. You only need... PSI to be about 2 to 3 PSI over the boost you're going to run. So if you're going to run 20 pounds of boost, you need about 23 PSI of fuel um, capable. So then this pumps up back here and it pumps into a fuel pressure regulator. So you set that with this piece here, just turning it and loosening it, and it feeds the carburetor through the filter and into the carburetor. So I've set it at, it's barely one PSI. And your float can hold one PSI. And again, this is reference from boost. So when this sees a five pounds of boost, it allows five pounds of fuel pressure more to go through here. So instead of my one PSI, I had the base pressure set at, it goes up to 5 plus 1, 6 PSI. And that's again, so fuel, when the boost goes through the carburetor, it doesn't push fuel back through the fuel line. You're, you're equalizing everything, is the idea. Um, on some of these, the flow, you might have to adjust to have less fuel than stock. And that's just because the pressure from the fuel pump can put a little, obviously a little pressure on the float and might might bend it a little more than regular when it's just in operation so you don't want to um, you know kind of flood the system by having a little fuel come up into the carb and get everywhere but this carburetor I didn't touch and and then the bottom of your regulator here that is a return line and so it returns to the fuel tank and it returns to the top right up here is where I've got it but I've just welded in a nipple there that it hooks to you need to return to the top of the fuel tank otherwise you're gonna be fighting the pressure this fuel has from gravity coming down if you hook a line just a hose coming out of the bottom of this fuel tank with this full and hook a, a pressure gauge to it you'll probably see like 3 psi so return to the top and that's how your fuel pump can just be constantly running it just is constantly feeding this returning through there but it allows so much to come into the car so there's your fuel system and i think you're good to go on that uh tuning i have welded into my exhaust a you can actually see it right there that bung I had a wideband O2 sensor and then ran to a PLX device that can Bluetooth to my phone so I can read air fuel gauges and data log it. Um, I can link that device in the description too, but once I was comfortable with where the air fuel ratios were, um, I took out the wideband sensor and that little device because now I don't need it. I adjust the power jet, if it gets cold or hot, um, maybe a quarter of a turn. You know, if it's a hot day down at the dunes, I'll, I'll open it a hair more, but if it's normal temperature, a little colder, I'll close it a little bit. But typically it's halfway to three-fourths of the way open. So not much adjustment. And got all I run's a simple boost gauge, attack, and a button 
little switch for my fuel pump and a key for the e-start um but yeah guys it's they're really not that hard it helps if you can fabricate and have some metal laying around because that really makes it a budget build um rideability a couple of people have asked um as long as you're in the upper mid to upper rpms this thing screams it's it's fun it's a it's stretched two and a half inches and it's it will really every gear you shift into and that's on 10 10 pounds of boost 10 to 15 i've had it to 20 but this compressor is way out of its range at 20 i don't even think it likes more than 10 but we are going with a, a new garrett gt1238 um that's gonna open up the exhaust a lot more the compressor's a little bigger but with that exhaust opened up more um we'll have better bottom end as well so and i do have some writing video finally my gopro broke but i've got this dji osmo mobile 2 gimbal thing and i tried holding it while riding so it is shaky but at least you can see what it sounds like and feels like and i'll put that on another video but uh check out all the videos on on this youtube channel i guess it's utah sand outlaws channel i think the channel is called turbocharged but check out all our racing videos we have races for the atc 70s um, not just drag races barrel races formula off-road races um and then we will do like a, a race a third of the way up the face um, lots of cool guys on there so yeah guys let me know if you have questions in the comments or or what have you you're ugly you're disgusting i'm gonna kill you give me two hundred dollars